Hey yo, is chemical engineering a dying field? I've heard a lot of my homies saying that. So according to the second law of thermodynamics, the universe will end up in a heat death. Okay, so... Which means that the solar system will end up... Oh, which implies that the Earth will end up... Mm -hmm. Which means that humans will cease in existence. Meaning that... Which means that the chemical industry will die. So is it okay or not to go into chemical engineering? Oh, you mean in the nearest 100 years? Yeah, chemical engineering is a safe bet, my friend. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So if you're new, don't forget to click in the notification bell so you get every new video. So I get this question a lot. Is chemical engineering a dying field? And to be honest, I see this a lot. It's not like just one or two questions. It's like a very common question I see a lot. Maybe because high school students don't look forward towards chemical engineering, they may see the old school industries creating plastics, oils and all that. Maybe because young engineers that have just recently graduated don't find a job, they think that the industry is shrinking, or maybe they just see that the industry is not innovating enough. Whatever the reason it might be, it's kind of hard to say yes or no to this question. Because what do you mean by dying field? You mean the increase or the acceleration of chemical production is stagnant or decreasing? You mean the rate of production of other chemicals or fuels? You mean the jobs that you can find as a recent graduate or as a experienced engineer? You mean the amount of new industries or new companies that are being created? Or maybe you're thinking about the innovation and technology within these industries? So what do people actually mean? So I'm actually going to stick to one question that one student asked me. Is it still worth it to go into chemical engineering in order to be a process engineer or should I go into another alternate field? So I'll try to consider several aspects in the chemical engineering world. So number one, we'll be trying to analyze academia. How has chemical engineering been studied and how is it being updated or maybe how it is evolving. We will talk about the job markets. Are they growing? Are they stagnant? Are they reducing? We will also talk about the products and services that chemical engineers are providing nowadays. And finally, innovations, technologies, and trends. What's up with the future of chemical engineering? Behold, as long as there is a need for chemicals, there will be a need for chemical engineers. Yoda, industrial engineer. So let's cover aspect number one, which will be academia. It's always a good idea whenever you see that a university, especially universities that charge a lot, are still offering degrees or programs or so. They are in the business of selling education. Meaning that what they want to do is of course sell you a degree. A lot of things are taken into consideration, but for sure employability is one of them. So if a university is granting or offering this type of titles, for sure is because they are doing their market research and people is still interested. Industries are still interested on this type of fields. So for sure, chemical engineering, you can find it almost in any university or at least universities that offer the basic engineering. And this means that there is still a need for chemical engineers. So that's a great check mark. Now, of course, you could argue that it is a dying field because the curriculum is kind of stagnant. There are no updates. The theory or the concepts that you study are pretty similar. Unit operations, heat transfer, automation, uh, plant control, and so on. You will very hardly see kind of exotic topics. For instance, the trends of machine learning in the applications of the industry, or maybe as performance management tools in order to improve the performance of a whole plant or so. So I'll give it to you. In this realm, we could say that chemical engineering uh, syllabus is kind of stagnant. It's not evolving, not quite dying because the tools or the units or equipments that we're using are still being used today. So heat transfer is a natural phenomenon, it's not going to go away, or at least remember until the universe dies from heat death. Or if we're talking about reactor engineering, we're still talking about reactions. Maybe we're changing the catalyst technologies, maybe we're changing the way in which we interact the materials, but still reactions are reactions, therefore we need reactors. Although I know guys that many of you are kind of hesitant 
towards going into not only chemical engineering but overall into studying a university degree which of course I have my opinion each time is getting more expensive to become a chemical engineer and at the same time you're getting less opportunities to find a job so yeah it's like a balance uh, eventually the balance is going to be reversed and so it might not be that worth to go towards engineering so in that specific case you could argue that chemical engineering is a dying field indeed that may be true for instance in the US or maybe in the UK that you have a lot of prepared engineers uh, very well educated engineers and you're importing engineers from all over the world but for countries such as developed countries for instance Mexico China India maybe Pakistan maybe Egypt or Middle East countries Turkey or so you will see that they are driving they are manufacturing a lot of products not only for domestic consumption but also for world consumption so a lot of countries are outsourcing their productions into these developing countries which means of course a need of qualified engineer labor which at the same time means that we need more engineers now let's talk about the job market and i know that the job market may not seem the best from all remember that chemical engineer has been kind of elite meaning that before it was very hard for someone to become a chemical engineer and eventually there was a huge need for chemical engineers a lot of chemical companies a lot of oil and gas a lot of fuels that had to be manufactured a lot of plastics all these revolutions we require a lot of engineers but right now there is a overflow of students that are graduating from chemical engineering and not only chemical engineering but process engineering mechanical engineering civil engineering environmental engineering biotech and many engineers that kind of overlap between each other so you are not only in competition versus other chemical engineers but other fields of engineering this may sound that there's a lot of fierce competition that this is a red ocean and it's very very hard to get a job but make no worries always the best candidates will get the best jobs meaning that if you are good enough you get your grades on spot you get your internships you build your network you are most likely going to land a great job in the other hand you could say that because it's kind of hard or harder to get a job as a chemical engineer chemical engineering is in fact a dying field i get it, and i will be on board with you but to say that there are no jobs in chemical engineering mm, that's not okay it's also very important to remark that this is mostly for newcomers or recent graduates. If you are maybe a process or chemical engineer that has been working maybe 10, 15, 20 years, I'm pretty sure that you have no problems in getting a great raise or another job position or maybe getting into another company. It's also important to remark that chemical engineering is in a mature stage. It's not like all this startup from technology, social media, Google, Facebook, Apple, uh, maybe even Tesla, which is in a mature field, but electrical vehicles are new. Those are in a very startup stage of the industry. But chemical engineering overall, chemical industries, chemical complexes, companies are in a pretty mature stage of the evolution of industry. And of course, we need to address the elephant in the room. Industries are cyclical and regional. The best example will be oil and gas. Sometimes oil is great, expensive, gas is also expensive. Prices of gas are on the highest, so it's very convenient to go and explore and produce more natural gas, more petroleum, refine it and all that. But what happens when the demand decreases? Well, these type of industries have problems. When the barrel prices decrease, well, it's kind of even harder to ensure production, which means that it's going to be expensive, which means that it's not convenient to produce. Meaning that it's regional, depends on the prices, on the market prices, and of course, cyclical, depending on the ups and down of the market. This idea is for me the one that ensures the chemical engineering field not dying. And it is that we humans still need products and services related towards chemical production. As long as you require food, as long as you require clean water, as long as you require detergents, soaps, as long as you require pharmaceuticals, medicals, as long as you require agriculture so you can convert your vegetable into food, as long as you require to move something, you will require packings, you will require paper, card box, plastics, as long as you require dressing, you will require textiles. As long as you require protecting surfaces, you will require painting, coatings, dyes. As long as you require having a home, a roof, you will require construction materials. And as long as you require energy, you will require fuels for that. And the list goes on and on and on. Actually, I will present you a list.
okay so those are the type of products that we require and if there are products there are companies and if there are companies there are people working there there's people leading those projects and leading companies so make no worries stating that chemical engineering is a dying field at least for this point, it's absolute bullshit. This last idea is actually into the non-sexy part of chemical engineering. So while your friend at Google can show off that he works at uh, Gmail and is doing the best improvement for the Gmail application and is going to revolutionize the world of email, well, I know that stating that for chemical engineering, so try to imagine that. We're going to revolutionize the idea of hydrogen storage and we're going to be using hydrogen and methane and crystals. It's going to be awesome. Average people will be like, what's hydrogen? Why do we need it? And okay, it's very industrial stuff. I don't use it in my day to day. So of course it's not that sexy. You could say and always argue that chemical engineering has this spot that needs to be filled. Chemical engineers don't talk that much about chemicals. They don't talk that much into chemical technologies. They don't talk about what's going on in the chemical world. But believe me guys, there is a lot of research going on for a lot of technologies. There's a lot of innovation to be made and being made. So for instance, carbon capture technologies, maybe hydrogen as I stated before, electrical vehicles, batteries, semiconductors, raw materials, bulk materials, pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, and of course a lot of niche applications that we haven't explored yet. And yes, I get the point of chemical engineering being a dead field because we don't have that much innovation and we don't have that much technology. But guys, remember, whenever you use your phone, your tablet, your laptop, think about the semiconductor, who produced that? Whenever you see a Tesla, go out and check out the battery. How long does it last? How efficient is it? And remember that someone was behind that. And of course, whenever you see a rocket going to the sky, to the universe, to the outer space, which type of materials alloys were produced there? Who's behind them? Just a food for thought. So this was my little rant on whether or not chemical engineering is a dying field or maybe a dead field. I know there's people already killing and barring chemical engineering, which doesn't make any sense, but either way, I'm not going to argue. You have the points. I really want to know what you think about it. Is chemical engineering maybe going towards the dead field or maybe it's evolving into a new regenerated chemical process and technologies. Let me know your thoughts here, but guys, I'm pretty sure that chemical engineering is going to stick for the next 100 years. It has been already 400 years. Remember that chemical engineering formally started in the beginnings of the industrial revolution. So I'm pretty sure that a industry that has lasted already 100 years can last maybe 100, 200, maybe hopefully 300 years. Either way, we are not going to be here. Or maybe just if a chemical engineer creates a material that allows us to live longer than 100 years. Anyways, you get the point. I'll see you in the next